Hey guys, this is Lish from Unscripted Podcast and Plain and Makeup. And today I'm going to be discussing books. So if you guys remember, if you are a subscriber of our audio podcast, and you can find that on iTunes, Lipson, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, and Acast, then you will remember that last year, and I do believe it was last year, I made one audio podcast called Book Talk, and that was where I literally talked about books that I had read and books that I wanted to read, like a TBR and then stuff that I read, and I have not done anything since then. However, I have been reading since then, um, and this is something that I've always wanted to do with the podcast. I wanted to take it a step further and add videos for like the booktube community. And also just for our subscribers that like books and are looking for book suggestions and just like hearing about books and discussions, reviews, recaps, uh, recommendations and all of that type of stuff. So this is going to be my first booktube community video under Unscripted Podcast. So I'm super excited about that. Um, now, if you're new here, before I go any further, make sure you hit the subscribe button. It is in the bottom right hand corner of your screen. Also, you can hit the bell and you will get notifications anytime Unscripted uh, puts up new content and you will get that however you have your notifications set up for YouTube on whatever kind of device or email. Um, if you'd like to email us and contact us as far as on social media, all of our contact information is below in the show notes so let's get to these books I'm not going to be talking about actual physical books in this particular episode I'm going to be talking about ebooks the particular ebooks that I'm going to be talking about are ones that I have found on my Kindle app using my Kindle Unlimited subscription for those of you guys who are not familiar with what Kindle Unlimited is it is a subscription on the Amazon platform for the Kindle or any e-reader, I do believe, any e-reader that you can get the Kindle app on, I should say, so Android device, Apple device, whatever. Uh, Kindle Unlimited basically just allows you to check out books from their library that are made specifically for Kindle Unlimited for free. Uh, you do pay a monthly subscription. It's $9.99 a month. There may be tax included depending on where you live. And you can check out up to 10 books at a time. If you want another book, you have to return one to get one. So I've been having it for probably about a year now and I'm kind of enjoying it. I've been utilizing it a little more within the last couple of months and I'm really happy that I did because I'm like, look, I've been paying $9.99 for this and I need to get my money's worth. I originally got it for my daughter because she reads like all the time but one thing that I will say as one of the cons of having a Kindle Unlimited is that the kids children's middle grade books aren't that great even the YA books you really have to you have to look for them but when you do find good ones it's like yes this is wonderful especially when it's like a series so there's like more than one um, now the books that I've been reading though for like the past month maybe a little bit over a month I've been looking for black authors specifically black female authors in the genre of romance i'm normally more of a rom-com type of girl i don't really go for the hot and steamy romance novels even though i did read like the first three books of uh what is it called outlander and when i say steamy oh, i did read those first three <laughs> But normally I'm a rom-com type of type of woman. Um, I don't really go for hot and steamy, lusty romance novels, uh, like soft porn type of books. But I do like a good, you know, boy meets girl or opposites attract or, you know, homie lover friends type story. I do like stuff like that. On the Kindle Unlimited, I found that it is really hard to find a lot of black romance novels that are just regular romance novels and not struggle love. And that is nothing against those people who write those types of books. But I'm 41. Reading a story about drug dealers and guys on the corner and guys who are married with 17 baby mamas, that's just not my cup of tea. So it was a little bit of a struggle to find some books that actually were something that I could con connect or relate to. Um, but once I did, I was very happy. I found a couple of new authors and I, well, new to me, um, that I appreciate that they have a large or bigger body of work. So that allows me to be able to catch up on their previous uh, works. Two of the, those authors we're going to discuss today. So I might as well just like get into the books. Um, the first author, and this is a romance novel. Novel. Her name is D.L. White. This is the first book that I read of hers and it's called Leslie's Curl and Die. 
And Leslie's Curl and Die is about a girl named Leslie, about a guy named Casey. And Leslie and Casey went to college together and they were like best friends in college. And there was some type of romance that went on between them at college. Flash forward years later, Leslie comes home. You know, she's graduated college. She's lived her life. She has a boyfriend. They live like in Chicago or somewhere out of town, away from her hometown. And she comes back home because her grandmother is ill. Her grandmother had a salon called the Curl and Die, which is like a staple in the community. It's been around forever. Her grandmother used to run it. Now her mom runs it and then it's going to be passed on to her. Since her grandmother is sick, her mother is going to be taking care of her grandmother. So it's up to her to keep the family legacy going. So she's here in town. The shop is kind of struggling. Um, it's not as much business as it used to be. Um, not only that, then there's like bunches of repairs that need to be made. Well, lo and behold there is a new shop in town guys and dolls and it's like this new schnazzy upstart it's kind of like a box retail like a fantastic sam's it's a barber shop and a salon all in one it's really nice they have all new everything and everybody's just gushing about it so leslie goes to meet her competition because she's just like i cannot believe that there's a new salon here you know this is a small community when she goes to meet or find out who the owner of the shop is she finds out that it's kc now keep in mind that they went to college together and they had some type of relationship like they were best friends but we don't know the extent yet of the relationship so when she finds out it's him she's super duper pissed so she finally you know in the beginning of the book like a few chapters in she confronts him and she's like you know how dare you move to my hometown you're not even from here and open this big schnazzy shop and you're taking away my business because you're a direct competitor to me and this and that and the other and he's like listen i'm just trying to make some money the mayor promised me tax breaks and this and that and the other if i moved and plus they're trying to develop this side of the lake and in the story there's a lake that the town is centered around it used to be like a huge tourist tourist town but lately um traffic has been slower than normal so thereby everybody's businesses that are there have been slower too well leslie is on the opposite side of the lake from kc apparently kc's on the gentrified side of the lake and leslie's on like the old school side of the lake so all the businesses on the old school side are mad at the businesses that are on the gentrified side because they're new they're attracting more people because they have all the bells and whistles where this used to be like a small mom and pop type city where people came here for this niche and now that's not happening because they're getting like walmart's and fantastic sam's and mcdonald's and all that stuff that make places not as personable and have that small hometown feel like normal you know what i mean so you know, she's telling him you know like you're messing this up for everybody and i don't like it well he was like well you need to talk to the mayor so they have to decide leslie and kc have to decide how they are going to work together so that they can help to save the community and so that they can both have business, successful businesses within this community without harming each other. And also the mayor needs to live up to his end of the bargain to the people on the gentrified side of town because they are taken away from the people that are on the other side of town and he's giving people promises that he can't keep and all of this craziness. So they have to make that decision. That's really part of their biggest struggle. And then we learn their backstory and there is more to the story than just they were best friends and they had a fling. So once we learn the backstory, it gets like a a little bit deeper and you start to appreciate the relationship between Leslie and Casey much more than you did. So it's really about their relationship blossoming and or if there is even you know their relationship blossoming as friends and as people who are trying to help each other because they both have issues that they are trying to deal with kc has issues and not really necessarily bad issues but he has his own set of issues he's retired from the nba he left because of an injury you know his family has things going on and then with leslie her family has stuff going on she came back in town specifically to help her mother because her mother is taking care of her sick grandmother you know so they both have things that they're dealing with so i like the fact that the characters have other lives besides just the ones with each other and that it's talking about something as real as like gentrification and small towns and business and things like that so it, it's a good story i definitely 
definitely recommend Leslie's Curl and Die. There are some funny characters in the book, um, some funny moments in the book, but there are also some very real moments. And then there's the romance piece to piece of it as well. So I think that it's an all around good read. Um, I was so happy with this particular book that I decided to read another book by DL. And the other book is a book called uh, Brunch at Ruby's. And this is the cover for that one. Brunch at Ruby's is a friend story. It has elements of romance in it. Um, it is talking about relationships, but it's talking about more so platonic relationships is really the big story here. It's about three friends, Deborah, Maxine, and Renee. Um, Deborah is an administrator. She's like a principal at a middle school that she's helped to turn around. Maxine is a real estate agent that sells luxury real estate, and then Renee, um, she was in business or she has her degree in business and lived out of town somewhere, but she's back in Atlanta. This is where the story takes place. She's back in Atlanta where Maxine and Deborah both are to take care of her father who has Alzheimer's. So kind of like Leslie's mom in the last book, Renee is coming back and taking care of her ill father. You know, she left her life behind to take care of family and she is running the family business, which is Gladwell's bookstore. And it's kind of like in a gentrified part of town too. It's kind of how I took that. Um, so in the book, they all have their own stories going on but then they have their stories with each other Deborah has a daughter and she has a husband and her and her husband have their own set of issues that might spill over into her professional life her daughter happens to go to her school so she may be affected by whatever issues they may have then Maxine has her own set of issues with the relationship that she has with her mother and then the relationship that she has with men and the way that she views herself because Lord she is so vain she's so vain and so materialistic but there are other layers to her as well and then there is Renee that is dealing with the issue with her father being sick her leaving behind her life that she used to have and there was a relationship there and now she's in a new town and just trying to figure everything out um, then there are conflicts between the ladies and they have to work through those as well. Uh, so it's, it's a really good story. I like that there are unexpected twists and turns to the book. There are unexpected things that happen to the characters in the book. Um, I like the, I like the way that the author, like she gives you realistic depictions of these women's lives. They're not perfect. You know, she doesn't paint these beautiful stories. She doesn't make it seem like everything is just like happy-go-lucky everything's gonna turn out roses in the end it's not like that it's a I think it's a, a really well written story with really good characters and they're all characters that I think that women of a, a large age range could all connect to in some type of way um, the reason why it's called brunch at Ruby's is because once a month which is totally realistic because who has time like every week to meet with their friends but like once a month the ladies meet at a restaurant in town called Ruby's and they get together and they dish and they catch up and all of that good stuff so all in all it's a good book and I definitely recommend that D.L. White does have other books available on Kindle Unlimited and also I'm sure she has hard paper copies hardbacks and, and paperbacks of her books available if you're interested if you don't have a Kindle Unlimited limited app um, that you can purchase on Amazon or indie bookstores possibly um, and, sh and I do believe she has a website now the next book after I read D.O. White's book that came up as a recommendation was a book by Christina C. Jones um, the book is called Love Notes and this book is part of what's called the Equilibrium series and I assume that this is the first book because I could not find a second. Um, in this book it deals with two main characters. One's name is Jules or Juliet and the other one's name is Troy and Jules and Juliet are both young probably early 20s. I'm sure it said it in the book but I can't quite remember. Jules moves away from her hometown but then she comes back to open up a business. Um, she was raised by her aunt and her husband so her aunt and her uncle and she was 
was raised in a home with her cousin and they're super duper close. Her name is like Anissa and they're best friends. Uh, she moves back in, they have an apartment together and Jules is also leasing out a space to start her new photography business because it's something that she loves to do and she has like this vision and this dream to open this place called Love Notes. That's gonna be the name of her photography studio. And then there's a guy in town, his name is Troy, super duper cute, used to be a playboy but now he's reformed. He has sworn off the playboy lifestyle and says that he wants nothing to do with it and the next time he falls in love the girl will be his friend so basically he's like i'm not getting involved i'm not doing one night stands if i'm going to get with anybody i'm going to be in a relationship until he meets Jules. So they meet and they both have to work through that. Like she's wanting to focus on her life and her new studio and getting her, you know, get her roots down and doesn't want to be in a relationship. She doesn't even believe in relationships or doesn't even know if she believes in love. Whereas Troy used to be a playboy. He used to, you know, do one night stands, nothing serious. And now he's like, I can't do anything, you know, if it's if it's not for real so that's where they're at they're totally different with that but they meet and they connect um one thing that i really 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 like about this book is that it addresses self-care and it addresses therapy um because jules and troy both have issues going on besides just this story so there's other layers to it which is always good when books have that when the characters aren't just waking up and talking to each other every day, talking about each other every day. Yes, they are a big part of each other's lives in the book, but they also have really big things that are going on in their life that are things that I think that a lot of people can relate to and they make it so that you know they bring that out like hey this is what's going on and this is what we need to do and talk about self-care and therapy and counseling and things in a very very positive way so i like that a lot another thing that i like a lot about this book is the way that she words things christina c jones has a really good way of connecting to the now like with the slang words that that the young people are using um i think that that makes this book more appealing um to younger readers as well and I, when i say younger readers i don't mean like 15 but i mean like you know 20s 30s because there's words in there that they see on social media and they can relate to it has like slang in it but it's not like corny slang like i knew what the stuff was talking about because i'm on social media a lot but i just thought that that was a nice touch to it and the story is still super relatable even if you're not like a millennial even if you're not like 20 to 35 years old you can still relate to this particular type of story so this again is book one i'm waiting for the next book i have not found it yet if you're interested in more of her books and you do have kindle unlimited she does have more books available there and you can also purchase her books on amazon as well and i'm sure again my like deal that she has hard copies probably at indie booksellers and most likely on amazon too um so that is christina c jones's book that i read now another book that i've read on my kindle unlimited is this was suggested by Lindsay. if you guys listen to the podcast and you would have heard Lindsay suggest this book to me when i said i was looking for something to read i thought it was something she read but lo and behold it was just a random book that she was like oh you should read that and i'm going to show you the cover and if you know Lindsay, then you'll know why she told me to read it this is the cover <laughs> So once I saw it, of course, I had to read it. I had to read it. This is a book, and apparently that's the author on the cover. So I said, why wouldn't I read this book? Um, and I am trying to read more books by Black female authors, whether they are fiction or nonfiction. Uh, this particular story I thought was a memoir, but I found out later after I went back and read the acknowledgments in the beginning that it is fiction loosely based on the author's life. Uh, basically, the story is about a woman named Belinda that was born and raised in the, in the late 30s in New York. She is one of eight children. Uh, her mom and her dad, devout Christians, they go to church probably three, four times a week, if not more than that. She and the rest of her family were very active in church. She was a singer. She um, All through her life, they, they sang in church. Um, her and her sisters had actually a singing group where they went around to different churches and places. I think they even recorded. So this may be part of her real story. She might have actually recorded something with her sisters. Um, but she was over like the youth ministries and everything at her church. Uh, the story 
talks you know in the beginning it talks about her growing up um talks about maybe her first and her second love and, and then it gets more so into her and her husband like when she finally got married it talks the, the most the biggest portions of the book is talking about her life after marriage and how she dealt with that um she ends up with like eight kids she has seven boys and one girl so she pretty much had the same amount of children that of the family she was born into seven boys and one girl one girl and the girl was the youngest like she was the last baby um this is i don't know if this is the author's story or again loosely based on maybe her and her mom's life who knows uh but most of the book talks about her life as she's married and when i tell you and this is not a spoiler because again the book is like 200 pages long so at least 150 pages are about her and her husband and all of that her husband cheats on her profusely like he cheats on her habitually throughout the book and the book is very anticlimactic you would think that someone who was born in the late 30s black woman got married probably at about because it didn't really tell you dates all through the book it wasn't like you know january 10th 1947 it was none of that it was basically just like i remember this time and telling you the story you would think that a story about a young black woman married with eight children in those times would focus a lot on the experience as her being a black woman in that time living those experiences but really it's not she tells the story just from her perspective um there's not a lot of talk about anything that has to do with race there's not a lot of talk about oppression there's not a lot of talk about segregation none of that so a lot of times when i was reading the book i was forgetting what era what decade you know was being talked about because of the way that it's written she doesn't really talk about the specific of the struggle that it was to raise so many children with her and her husband and really her husband just working um so i don't really know how hard it was but it's very very anticlimactic in a lot of places she would be telling a story of like maybe her husband cheating and the woman calling the house and the end would just be but i prayed about it which you will find in the book that is her answer to a lot of things and that's that's completely fine but i'm used to reading fiction and when you're reading about drama in fiction that's usually not how stories like that end um so the story is really about her resilience her courage her strength her faith in god her family just everything that she went through but it's a really 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 mild version of what it probably really was because she does not spill tea. She just tells it for what it is and then ends with, you know, I'll always keep my faith in God, which is great. Like, that is amazing. I just needed to be a little bit more depth to the, to the story. That's all. That's all. Um, so, again, that was called Just Say No. I don't even think I told y'all the name of it. Just Say No, It Takes Just One Step of Faith by Bernice Butler. That was the name of that book. And then the last book that I have read on my Kindle Unlimited this month has been, this book is called To Raise a Clenched Fist. Let me let that focus. And this is by author T. Thorn Coyle. T. Thorn Coyle has written a book called Like Water, and that is apparently a really popular book. This was my first introduction to this author. Um, this book is a one of because it is a series and it's in the panther chronicles book the book is about the black panther movement in the late 60s and the 70s it's about a girl named jasmine and her uh, aunt they both have magic abilities and this is just about the role that they play within the black panther music movement and within the community how they're trying to get their uh, association of magic and sorcerers and magicians how they're trying to get all of those people on board with helping the community and helping the panthers against hoover and what they're fighting against hoover is like this evil character in the book if you guys know who he is he was like the head of the fbi um really bad guy set up people you know he criminalized the black panthers um talks about fred hampton uh talks about huey newton and how he was arrested talks about angela davis and then it talks about the young boy who was killed um in the park you know in the the protests that happened after that so it talks about a lot of stuff it's like a historical fiction um and the character is just placed in the story it's just a story within time of something that we know 
you know, that the Black Panther movement happened, but it's telling a story within that time about a girl who was part of that movement and who worked at the headquarters and was around those people. And it tells us, it tells the story from the perspective of with, you know, Fred and Huey being the, the leaders and Angela being the type of leaders that they were, that they also had magic abilities too. Um, that their strength, that they were actually they actually had magic and, and Hoover was trying to figure out what that magic was or he was trying to interfere with that magic. Um, but this is the first book in this series. I won't lie, it was kind of hard for me to read through just because the way the book was written in some places. Um, but it's not a bad book. I like the concept of it. I don't know if I will be picking up the rest of the books in the series or not. It took me probably about a week to read through it. At first I didn't want to, but I was happy when I finally did because I did enjoy where it ended up developing into because it was taking a long time to get to where it had to go because I was like okay where are we going with this so I did like where it was going at the end but I don't know if I will be continuing that series I would recommend this book if you are interested in historical fiction with a little bit of sci-fi fantasy well not a little bit but sci-fi fantasy mixed into it it's not a um romance novel and this is not a black author t coil t thorn coil appears to be a white lady she could be hispanic could be native american but i don't think that she's a black or brown woman she could be i could be completely wrong about that um, and it doesn't fall into the romance category, but there is some romance in this book and it is a book about a woman and it's on the Kindle Unlimited. So it fits kind of into the description of what I said I'd be talking about. All right. So those are all the books that I'm, that I have finished. Now, Kindle Unlimited, what I am currently reading on there is this book by Louisville native Olivia A. Cole. It's called Panther in the Hive. And this is part of uh, the Tasha trilogy by, written by Olivia Cole. So there's two other books that go to this. I'm about maybe 10 chapters in. It's really good so far. It's basically like Walking Dead. There's a change that happens in Chicago and it turns people into like what I assume to be zombies. I don't quite know what triggered the change and specifically what the change is, but Tasha is just trying to navigate life now that the change has happened. The book takes place in the future. There's like flying cars and shit at some point. Um, there is um, like a monarchy almost in, in the United, it's not even called the United States anymore. It's just called the States. California has seceded from the United States. So it's, it's a lot to the book. Again, I'm only about maybe 10 chapters in, if that, and it's good so far. If I had to recommend it based on what I've read so far, I would definitely recommend it. Plus I've heard great things about Olivia Cole in her writing. So I'm very excited to finish this and get the other books if I'm happy with the end of this one. And then she has a new book that she just wrote and I cannot remember the name of it to save my life, but I will put it in the show notes. I do apologize for that. Now, if you guys have a Kindle Unlimited subscription or if there are black romance novels written by black female authors or even male authors that you want to suggest that I read, please put that in the comments below. Um, tell me about maybe some of your favorite black female authors that write romance. If you know of any black romance comedy books, please let me know. Please, please, please. I am not the type of person that really enjoys reading the novels that have like the guns and the cars and the sexy girl on the, that's just not, and there's so many of those on the Kindle Unlimited, but that's just not my cup of tea. A lot of people like them, it's just not for me. So if you know something that is more my pace, like a friendship book with little comedy thrown in there, little romance thrown in, put that down in the comments for me. So um, guys, that is it for today. Thank you all so much for watching the video. All of the contact information is below in the show notes. Please, please, please continue to connect with us. Leave comments, give this video the thumbs up if you enjoyed it and share it. Share it on your Facebook, share it on your Twitter, share it on your YouTube, add it to a playlist. That is it. I will see you guys next time. Bye.